Bamboo building bewilderment supports suffering strings and doing the do doesn't denote distinction. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 170. The cat's in this one. Let's get into it. Starting off with a request from a fan who emailed over their Print Fix Friday submission saying they started this print a day and a half ago and whenever they went back to check it to clear out the purge for the multicolor, they noticed the super thick and random patches of filament sticking out of the model. They printed at least 10 of these before with the exact same filament and have never had this problem. It's an X1 Carbon. It's recently had some updates done to it with new extruders, run out sensor, you know, just normal maintenance stuff. And the maintenance is the thing that is kind of, you know, tickling my attention. We can see they've updated it with some more photos. We can definitely see some weird patchiness on the layering. It apparently really only happens on the front side of the print. We do have a couple little lines there, but that looks more to be related to the actual color changing than anything else. And overall, the rest of the print looks fine. My best guess that's happened here is that during those actual repairs to the printer itself, some screws were left loose because I got a couple of screws up in my head loose. But no worries, what's going on in your parents' bedroom? And potentially that hot end is wiggling ever so slightly. The other option that I wanted them to check was also to look at the actual hot end itself. When bamboos move, they move crazy fast. Even on their stock setup, the machines can move incredibly fast. And that speed, if you have some layers that are warped a little bit, can actually cause the hot end itself to get damaged. Now, the fact that we're not seeing this issue anywhere else other than the front of the part tells me that it's likely a screw or something that's a little bit loose, allowing that hot end to wiggle back and forth. And it only happens when the machine comes back, right? So when it's coming around, it's totally fine. But when it's pulling backwards, that's where we start to see this issue. So I would make sure that everything is tight and good to go on the machine, but then also check to make sure that the hot end itself isn't bent. Commenters were talking about the potential of the belt being evenly tightened, and while that's not necessarily a bad thing to check, I don't often find belt tension to be a problem on modern printers, and we would likely see it on more than just one side, being that it is a core XY. It's a good thing to check, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with checking it at all, but I'm not certain that one is the issue. Their second comment, making sure the hot end is tight and doesn't jiggle around, I think that is really what's going on there. It could be a hot end, the hot end itself could be bent a little bit, but I just think they didn't tighten everything up perfectly after the extruder rebuild. The other thing I recommend is that they check their Bowden tubes to make sure that the Bowden tubes themselves are not damaged in any way. The AMS Bowden tubes specifically, because they're underneath the AMS of the bamboo, can wear quite a bit well before you notice it. And the backlash that's caused in there can create failure similar to this, which appears to be like an under extrusion type of failure. But what we're actually dealing with is more of like a double extrusion failure. This is one of those problems of having a print farm where you don't watch the machines all the time or don't check up on them regularly. Because if you were going back to check on this regularly, you might be able to see what this issue is as it's occurring. My best guess is that something's wiggling. So let me know your thoughts in those comments, but I'm going with a couple of screws up in their head loose. What on earth is going on with my supports? Bamboo Lab A1. We've got some kind of crazy looking part here where the part itself looks okay. A little bit of under extrusion here. The interface layers for the support look like crap. And the support itself looks like you're doing one of those like hairy lions or something where you're deliberately trying to bridge. Then you cut all the bridging out and then you use a heat gun to make everything look fuzzy. But this is not intended. When I saw it, I knew immediately what it was, and the top commenter agrees with me, and the original poster even verified. So thank you, everybody, for, like, going through and making that happen. They said they've never used a bamboo personally, but my first thought was that you might be using something like a .2 nozzle with a .4 setting or something similar. 100% agree. When you see extrusions that don't connect like that, and you're using profiles that have previously worked, check to make sure your hardware and software are actually working together. This is the nice thing 
about machines currently is that you can set the nozzle diameter and it shouldn't accept the file if the nozzle diameter doesn't match the actual diameter for the printer. Does that make sense? Like if your software and hardware don't match, you get a mismatch and it won't work. And yes, that's exactly what it was. I said I'm, they must not have been paying attention. They had a 0.2 millimeter nozzle installed, but 0.4 selected in the settings. I had no idea why only my supports were being affected, but hey, it's working now. Your help is appreciated. And as the next person replying says, your entire print is affected, but you only notice it in the supports. Your perimeters, you can theoretically run much wider than your nozzle diameter. That, that's totally fine. In fact, we've done it before. We recommend people do it to some extent. That way you're getting a little bit of squish and you're not making a round extrusion. And while the rest of the print does look pretty good, we can see some indication that there is damage uh, from the extrusion on that support underside, if you will, like right where the support and the base layer of the print connect. Kind of is what it is in this circumstance. They are printing this with the right orientation, which is great. And I would hedge a bet that if they tried to break these parts, they would likely see that the inside has some rough connections as well. So what really can be done here, right? Other than patting a cat every now and then, because cats help get rid of frustration ultimately. I think that really just making sure that your nozzle and your profiles match. A good way to check this is to put something onto your actual printer that will remind you what size nozzle is installed on the machine. Prusa Research actually does this in their print farm, which we recently showed you. And we'll card to that video so you can take a look to see how Prusa maintains a print farm of almost 1,000 machines making parts for their machines. It's a really interesting way to do product testing the hard way. Last but not least, this one's not technically a fail, but it's kind of a fail, but I wanted to show it off no matter what. This is from Danny Neokoi Prince said, first time printing with Mountain Dew two liter filament. That's a whole thing, pultrusion with the Recreator 3D. It's a really cool way to take any plastic bottles of sorts and turn it into filament. So it needs to be dried next time, but overall happy with the results. All things considered, it's got a TD value of 9.7 if anyone is wondering. Gotta love it. This is what actual wet filament looks like, like properly wet filament. And we can see that Josh, the creator of Recreator, said Mountain Dew is something special of all the materials he's tried. It 100% needs to be dried and always tends to print up fluffy even when drying to be a fly on the wall in the bottling company. It's likely due to some sort of the additives that they add to the PET plastic that give it that crazy neon green color. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew! Or it could be a special copolyester that they're using. It's cool print. I would love to make a recreator here on the channel. I just don't drink soda or really use a lot of plastic bottles. So like we could certainly look into doing something like this if you guys would like to see it. So if so, let me know in those comments and we'll work with Josh to get a kit and get it built because I do have some old printers that we can salvage parts off of. But I do really like the ability to take what would normally be something that either gets recycled or tossed into a landfill and give it another life in something that could end up getting recycled or tossed into a landfill. Either way, it's nice to see that we're not ultimately just throwing things away immediately. And phenomenal, especially if you live in an area where filament is difficult to get or incredibly expensive. If you have a poltrusion machine or you make your own filament, I'd love to hear from you down in those comments because I want to learn more about the technical process of making filament. We've made filament before. In fact, we have an entire video making filament at Printed Solid a couple of years back, and it was awesome to make Jesse's elixir, which, um, this should still be Silver Fox. And I will continue to argue that this should be called Silver Fox. If we can have a color called Electric Lemonade, we can have a color called Freaking Silver Fox. Printed Solid. Love you guys. But certainly when you look at doing more refined types of material, something that's very specific, the way to produce it changes considerably. We saw just this year at Printed Solid where they were making the Ruby Elixir, which is actually printed right behind me. It's beautiful red, gorgeous color, where they're using a dosing mechanism that mixes the TPU, the colorant, and that raw PLA together. Do extrusion companies that do things like 
bottles and things like that. Do they do something similar? Are they mixing larger batches of it? I'd love to learn more about the technical things that go into making some of the high-end filament, like Z Polymer's Tullamer, which we have some. And we're going to be doing a really fun contest. So get subscribed and stay tuned if that's something that you want to see. Because we're going to see if we can beat Tullamer with any modern material that we have in our shop. Tullamer is an amazing material. If you don't know about it, we'll link to it in the description. It's expensive. It's about $500 a kilo. But the stuff is like stronger than steel. We're going to be putting it to the test. Since we had some trees fall over during Hurricane Milton... And that's a very big tree. And that's all I'm really going to put out there. So if you had some really awesome ideas on how we can torture test Tullamer, I'd love to know in those comments as well. Just like I'd love to thank all the awesome names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for everything that you all do in making these videos possible. In fact, right now I'm in Prague because of these awesome people and the wonderful and generous donations of viewers like you. Thank you very much for supporting the efforts that we do and allowing us to travel the world, showing you amazing things in the 3D printing industry. And, well, interviewing the awesome people that make it happen as well. But that's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Sorry, cat. Oh, what a good yawn. You're so EB. You're so EB.